Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I am your host, Kevin, here for a review of the Burton Genesis X EST. I rode these on the new 2019 Custom X camper, not flying V, because camper's better. At Vail, mid-season-ish, kinda. Uh, hadn't really been any new snow, so it was still kind of firm out. Um, pretty much rode that all day, and yeah, uh, the conditions were pretty average for mid-season. The adjustability on the Burton Genesis X EST is pretty standard across the entire Burton line. There's honestly not a ton to adjust here, so you've got your strap adjustments, toolless bolts that you flip the little tabs up, spin them out, put them back in. It does have a Phillips head on those screws, so if you do need to grab a screwdriver, you can. The Ford Lean is on one of those flip blocks back there. It's not the easiest to get a hold of, and sometimes it'd be kind of sticky and hard to get it to move up and down. But once you get it set, leave it, don't touch it again. The straps on these are of the new breed of honeycomb injected, no fabric, no stitching, and they work well. I like them, I've been a fan of these pretty much ever since they came out. This version of that strap uses the crossband uh, versus the one on the Malavita that is the single band that comes across. The crossband's a little bit stiffer, a little bit more supportive, makes sense matching up to the stiffer idea of the Genesis X. The toe strap is really where the cool stuff comes in with this binding. The previous toe strap was meh. It just didn't fit boots well. I never had any functional problems with it, but the fit was just bad. It just wasn't good. So this new toe strap, it's just a split toe opening. It's just better. It fits across more boots seamlessly. It looks better and it pulls your boot back into the binding better than that old one did. So while I didn't have any functional issues with the old one, this new one does function still way better. Burton is using the double take ratchets on this binding. So it's that ratchet that climbs on the top part of the ladder and locks on the bottom side. I've never had any functional problems with these ratchets. I rode them for an entire season. I've heard of some people that have had these freeze on them. I never had that problem, but I guess if you're the type of person that sees their standard ratchets freeze all the time, then you may have some issues with these. I know that they've cored out the toe ratchet a little bit more so the snow can kind of evacuate out the sides so you don't get the buildup under there. But still, if you're the type of person that freezes ratchets, you might have some issues with these. The only real issue I've had with this ratchet is on the toe strap. It pushes the ladder a little bit further away from the strap itself and can cause some pressure. So if you're running a boot that has a wider toe box that's also softer built and just is kind of malleable, you may get some pressure on the inside, kind of right on your little toe out there. The high back on this binding is one of the defining features really of this binding. It's one of the first things you see that really draws your eye to it. It is a three piece high back. So you have your support spine in the back, you have your spring, and then you have the piece that your boot actually touches, the mesh construction on the inside, the hammock piece on the inside. Overall, the three work together. Mesh part of that, what hitting your boot, it kind of follows your boot around a little bit. And then pushing back into that, all that goes into the spring, which then goes into the high back itself. And overall, it's a stiffer high back for sure. It doesn't really feel like that in the store, so if you're playing with it in the store, just know that it's kind of deceptive. It is definitely a stiffer high back and it's definitely supportive, but it's really, really smooth at the same time because you're pushing through that spring to get to that meaty part of the high back. Overall, you're putting everything together on this binding and it is stiff. It is a carbon nylon frame and the EST version of this, this is the really, really cool piece of this binding, is spring bed. So your traditional binding, pretty much everything else out there, you're standing on foam. One way or another, you've got foam underneath your foot, whether it be EVA or PU or rubber, something. This, you're standing on a carbon plate that's elevated up top of the rest of the board. So it creates this super dynamic, super energized feel right underneath you that you can just load and spring from edge to edge. It just creates this really active, but at the same time, extremely smooth feel because you're not actually touching the board and you're kind of floating above it on this carbon plate. It's awesome. It is by far one of the coolest feeling things I've ever had in the binding underneath my feet. It's rad. So if you've got an EST board and you're looking for something different and unique, definitely check this out because the spring bed is nuts. Burton markets this binding as their Ferrari, their aggressive free ride, super active, very energetic, very responsive binding. It 
honestly, they nail it. The spring bread on these is insane. It just works differently than anything else I've ever written, and it feels awesome. And then on top of that, you have the carbon nylon frame, so it's super stiff, super responsive, very reactive, and very supportive. That on top of the high back that's back there that rides really smooth, but has a lot of support and response to it. This binding is active, it's supportive, and it's this is by far probably my favorite binding in the entire Burton lineup, and that is because of spring bed. If you've seen my reviews of the Reflex version of the Genesis X that does not have spring bed or the standard Genesis, you know that I'm not really the biggest fan of the high backs. Not from a functional standpoint, I think they work great. I just like a little bit more of a direct, more kind of high feedback feel out of my high back. But I'm honestly willing to overlook that because of how rad the spring beds are. Granted, if I had my way, I would take the high back off, put a Malavita high back on there and create a hybrid. But you know, you don't always get to do that kind of stuff. And maybe if you've got $800 to drop on bindings, then you know what, go for it. But I don't. So I would honestly overlook the high back feel. Not that it's really that bad for me, it's not bad really, it's just again a personal preference. And I would definitely ride these bindings and for me, since my style of riding is more that carving, fast charging style nowadays, I can put these on pretty much anything that I would normally ride outside of my park decks. I like this binding. Spring beds are sick. Thanks for watching, I've been your host, Kevin. What did you think? Have you ridden this binding? Did you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Leave a comment. And if you're new here, click the subscribe button and click the bell. Make sure you're getting notifications that these reviews and other videos are going to be coming out. Check out Angry Snowboarder VIP while you're at it. It's the best way to support us, support Angry Snowboarder, and keep these projects coming. Come back and see me in the next video.